My name is Tim Francis of West Tech Electronics. Today, on this video, I'm going to walk you through the way to use West Tech Electronics Tail Line Assistance Far End Device. It can be used with most RFL test sets in the marketplace today. I've used Far End Devices myself. I spent 29 years with uh, AT&T as a technician, as a manager, uh, working in the field, so I know how valuable a, a far end device is. So follow along with me and we'll learn about the device together. I'm here to tell you today about West Tech Electronics TLA, which is a tail line assistant far end device. It's an assistant device that technicians can use in the field to find their trouble and take resistive fault readings. If you notice today, I went ahead and I tested it to make sure that it has tone on the device. During this presentation, I'm going to go through some of the different points about this device. It's very easy to use, and any technician can use it to go ahead and find their trouble and effectively do resistive fault locating and section analysis in the telephone cable. In fact, one of the uh, better points of this device is working in cable where pairs have been transposed. I've connected the TLA, the far end device, to a vacant cable pair in which I'll be doing some testing on. If you've noticed earlier, it has a warbling tone that it puts out. Today we're working on a pair that is a dry pair. There's no dial tone on this pair. And we're going to find it in another location. By putting the tone on here, I can effectively find the pair in multiple locations and at a serving area interface where the pair will appear so we can do some more testing on the pair. To give you some background on the device, when you first turn the device on, you notice you have a red light that is flickering at the rear of the device. When you first turn it on, there is another light that glows for a second that tells you if your battery is working. Once again, the red flashing light shows it in the sleep mode. It's ready to be used, but it doesn't have warbling tone. We press it again, and on the left side, we have a red light that's flashing. It's indicating now that it's sending a warbling 1,007 hertz tone over the pair. Sending tone over the pair is important as many times the pairs do not find their way to the cross connect box in the count that they're supposed to be in, which is something that is happening over many of the telephone companies. So this will assist the technician in finding that pair and taking an effective reading and test on that. And now, when you're using the TLA, you have to set it up the amount of time that you're going to be in any test mode. The default for this is 10 seconds. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to set it up for one minute. So first we have to, if you notice, we still have warbling tone on there, so we need to cancel that. To access that, we're going to press the star key for five seconds on the dial pad. Now the test tone is going to sound like that. Now we're ready to access the device and, and do some setups in it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the amount of time. So I'm going to set it up for one minute. So now it is set up for one minute for any kind of testing that we're going to do. One minute is usually sufficient for doing uh, just about any kind of testing on this device unless you're using a more complex test equipment. If you're using something as simple as the HST 3000 or the Dynatel 965 DSP or even the 965 Lunchbox uh, RFL machines, this is only about 40 seconds to take a resistive fault read, so this should be sufficient time. Here I'm going to talk to you about if you're using the Sidekick Plus for resistive fault locating. The Sidekick Plus takes a substantial more amount of time than normal uh, resistive fault uh, test devices. So in this case, we're going to set it up for three minutes. So 
we'll do 9 star 3 pound. So now the device is set up to test for up to three minutes. In this particular 1.1 terminal, we have the five pin protectors. We have an attachment saddle that has a cord for the device. It attaches just like this. You can plug right in directly into the pair and access it. A lanyard that can suspend the device and keep it out of the way. And now we are into the pair and we can test this pair and locate this at the other end without any obstructions. When you don't have access to a five pin, we have another cord saddle here, goes over the TLA. We have on here a tip and ring and a ground lead, although we have two other leads on this particular cord that are for future use. We can take the ground, ground the device here, take the TLA, and we're going to go ahead and suspend it. Then we are going to go ahead and place tip and ring clips here. And now we can access the device doing the same test that we could do with the five pin, just with this uh, cord setup. Now we've moved out to the location where the serving area interface is at. Using my probe, I'm going to find the tone for my pair in the cross-connect box. As, our, as you remember before, I told you that sometimes pairs are transposed, and having tone on the TLA to give us tone on the pair helps us find it at the cross-connect box. I've located the pair on this binding post here. So now I'm going to go through a series of tests. The first test I'm going to do is verify that my tone is actually coming across the pair on both sides. My tone is coming across on both sides. In this testing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to access the device and put it in the test mode. That tone tells me I'm in my test mode, the mode I want to be in for testing. Option number four will give me a short on the line. As we can see, this is a sidekick, and we're going to go ahead and look and test and see if we have a short on the line. No stress indicates there's nothing on either side of the line, but now we have a short across the line. I have placed the device for approximately one minute, so I could do a series of tests and verify uh, where my, uh, how far my pair goes in this test mode. This also verifies that I have continuity. If you notice on my times one, it shows me on amount of ohms where my pair is at. I could take my ohms and then calculate how far away my device is actually at. Once the device times out, I can do a series of other tests. I can do one side to ground, either the tip side or the ring side or both sides to ground. If the device were connected to a pair with dial tone, I could access the device and turn the dial tone off and be able to test to the device, eliminating the dial tone or the central office battery and ground. And that's a wrap up for the Telline Assistant. This is a perfect tool for the technicians out in the field to be able to test and isolate trouble in a timely manner reducing the amount of truck rolls, reducing the amount of people needed, and increasing the productivity of the technician. Great tool, great price, and it's available now.